Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start as we spend a little time together in the Word of God and in prayer. Each morning, we start out with a chapter of Scripture, and so the idea is that we would read that chapter together and work our way through, book by book, the New Testament. Right now, we are working our way through the book of Acts, and so each day we read one chapter from Acts. Today, we are up to Acts chapter 15. And so I hope when we're all done today, you'll take a few moments to read the whole of Acts chapter 15. Now, for the purpose of our lesson this morning, we're going to read just a portion of that. We'll be looking at verses 22 to 29. So if you have a Bible handy, or if you want to pull it up on your phone, I invite you to join me in Acts chapter 15, beginning in verse 22. Then the apostles and elders with the whole church decided to choose some of their own men and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They chose Judas, they called Barsabas, and Silas, men who were leaders among the believers. With them they sent the following letter, the apostles and elders your brothers, to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, greetings. We've heard that some went out from us without our authorization and disturbed you, troubling your minds by what they said. So we all agreed to choose some men and send them to you with our dear friends Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are sending Judas and Silas to confirm by word of mouth what we are writing. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. You are to abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. You will do well to avoid these things. When you read the whole of chapter 15, you're going to see the story of what we call the Council of Jerusalem. And so, like Saul's conversion, uh, like Peter's vision, this Council of Jerusalem is really one of the important moments in the history of the church as it pertains to reaching the Gentiles with the good news of the gospel. What basically happens here is that certain Jewish believers, they were converted Christians, they were, they were Jews who had been converted to Christianity, had gone out from Jerusalem out into the Gentile world and had begun to teach among the Gentile Christians that in order for them to truly be saved, they must first become Jewish. That is to say, they would have to live by the Jewish law in order to accept Christ. Now, Paul and Barnabas, who were really leading the outreach to these Gentile believers, came into sharp dispute, we're told, with these people who had begun to share this message that believers should be required to do this. And so, because of this agreement, they all go back to Jerusalem where there is this big meeting to decide. They're called it the Jerusalem Council. Right? And so, in the end, they came to a sort of compromise. The Gentiles would not have to live by the law. They would not have to be circumcised to and the rest of the 600 plus laws of the Jewish faith in order to be a Christ follower. However, there were a few things that they did ask the Gentile believers to observe. Not for salvation, but as a matter of godly practice. Among them were things like avoiding sexual immorality and idol worship. Now, I have to be honest with you, as I read this this morning, I struggled a little bit with the, the whole concept at first, right? I mean, why should there be any legalistic requirements at all? I mean, if they were not uh, saved under the law, then why preserve any of it? But as I thought about it and prayed about it, I realized that these were not so much requirements for salvation, but simply good practices for life. Now, I'll be honest, I don't necessarily understand all of them in terms of why they chose these certain things for the Gentile believers to adhere to and, and not the other 600 plus. But I can certainly see where 
some of these things were really important specifically for the Gentile converts. That these were some areas that they might be prone to struggle in, where they might face temptation. For example, idol worship was very much a part of their former lives. Before becoming Christ followers, they would regularly participate in idol worship of all kinds of other gods. Right? And so to refrain from anything related to idol worship makes sense. And, and sexual immorality. You may not know this, but part of uh, a lot of the ancient religions was the practice of, of uh, temple prostitutes. Right? That was part of the religious expression. Uh, and so the idea that they would not uh, participate in those sorts of things really was intended to help them, I believe, live better lives. And so these guides were there to help them stay true to the faith that they had found, this newfound faith in Christ. And so for us today, we are saved by grace. But there are still for us certain practices that we may also want to fulfill in living a life that honors Christ and ultimately that is best for us. These are not legalisms for salvation, but they are best practices for an abundant and blessed life. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this story of the Jerusalem Council and Lord, maybe we don't understand all of it. It wasn't really our culture. Uh, we don't necessarily know everything about what they had experienced prior to coming to Christ. But we can see, Lord, from this passage that even though we are saved by faith, there are certain things that are, are helpful, that are important for living a life that reflects well the Jesus within us. And so help us, God, to know that we are, we are saved by faith, but there are still ways of living that we would want to observe, things that honor God and help us to have an abundant life. And so help us find that appropriate balance in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.